Hi, my name is Rebecca from Ingvid. In today's lesson, I'll be talking about a very commonly used verb in the English language, and that's the verb to be. And uh, even though this is a very commonly used verb, it's still confusing to a lot of English students for a variety of different reasons. So in today's lesson, we're going to divide the lesson into two parts. First, I'm going to explain to you when to use the verb to be, and then I'll show you how to use it in three different tenses, in the present, in the past, and in the present perfect. Okay? Now, uh, that's really important to be able to do. So if you stick with me right till the end of this lesson, you will know how to use the sentences that start with I am, I was, and I have been. Okay? Now, why is the verb to be so difficult? Well, first of all, because the verb to be is different from all other verbs in the English language. Okay? There's like a division. There's the verb to be, and then there are all the other verbs in English. So the verb to be, you have to learn the structure and the rules of using that verb. And the second reason why the verb to be is so challenging at times is because in many languages, we don't use the verb to be, especially in the present tense. That's why sometimes you have students uh, saying things like, I student, or I happy. Now, those sentences are not correct, because what's missing? The verb to be. That student should say, I am a student. I am happy. But perhaps in their languages, they don't need to use that in the present tense. And that's why it can become a bit of a challenge to get used to using it. So let me explain to you first, when we use uh, the verb to be, there are many, many different contexts in which we use it. So let's review that and then we'll go further. Okay, let's get started. So we can use the verb to be to talk about age. I am 26. About gender. I am a woman. Somebody could talk about their marital status. I'm married. I'm engaged. I'm divorced, etc. I'm separated. Okay. Uh, family status. I'm a mother. I'm a father. Okay. You could also use the, um, the verb to be to talk about your health, your physical health and your mental or emotional health. So you could say, I'm well or I'm ill. You could say, I'm happy or I'm depressed, right? Okay. We use the verb to be also to talk about our occupation. I'm a doctor, I'm a teacher, etc. right? Also about nationality. Somebody could say, I'm Egyptian, or I am Korean, okay? Also about your political affiliation. Somebody could say, I'm a liberal, I'm a conservative, all right? Also your religion, I'm a Muslim or I'm Muslim, I'm Hindu, I'm Christian, okay? When we say I'm Hindu, it means I'm a person of um, the, from the Hindu religion. I'm a Hindu means a person who is a Hindu. So you could actually say it either way, with the word a or without uh, the article a, okay? Um, you could use the verb to be to describe your location. I am in Moscow. I am from Brazil. Again, we need to use the verb to be. You could also use it to describe the field uh, you are you work in, right? For example, I, as a teacher, I'm in the field of education. So I could say, I am in education. Somebody else could say, I am in computers, right? So these are just a few of the very many situations in which we need to use the verb to be. Next, we'll be talking about uh, the verb to be in the present, in the past, and in the present perfect. Okay, so let's look at how to use this essential verb to be in three different tenses. These are the present, the past, and the present perfect, okay? So in the present, I would say, I am tired, for example. When I say, I am tired, it means right now, okay? That's the present. If I'm using the past tense, 
I would say, yesterday I was tired. Okay? So when I use the simple past and I say I was, it means I'm referring to a time in the past which is finished and over. Yesterday I was tired. All right? Present perfect, we combine the present and the past. And we say something like this, I have been tired all week. That means at the beginning of the week, in the middle of the week, and now. So in present perfect, we are referring to the present and the past. Okay? Or the past and the present. All right? Depending on how you look at it. All right? So I am, I was, I have been. Let's see how we can use this in different examples and how it changes the meaning of what we're trying to communicate. So somebody could say, I am a doctor. That means he or she is a doctor now. Five years ago, I was a student or I was a medical student. Okay, so five years ago, clearly in the past, it's finished, it's over. So that's past. And the third one, I have been a doctor for five years. What does that mean? I have been is present perfect. It means the person started being a doctor five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, and now. All right? So I have been a doctor for five years includes the past as well as the present. So you see how by using present tense, past tense, or present perfect, we are in fact able to communicate different kinds of information. Let's look at another example. I am ill. I am ill means I am ill now, in the present. I was ill on Monday. Let's say today is Wednesday. I was ill on Monday, which is clearly in the past. Or I have been ill for the last two days. I have been ill means I was ill and I am still ill. Okay? So that's present perfect for you. Another example, I am married, that means now, for example. I was married in 2001. Usually we say I got married, but people could also say I was married in 2001. Okay? And last one, I have been married for 12 years. Okay? Now here the person is saying that he or she got married 12 years ago and has been married throughout that period of time, including right now, okay? So I hope that these examples in the present past and present perfect have shown you ways in which you can talk about your life in terms of what you're doing now, what you did yesterday or in the past, and what you have been doing, okay? So if you'd like some more practice on this, please feel free to go to our website, www.ingvid.com. Thanks for watching. Good luck with your English.